Hello everybody and welcome back to the airing of grievances. I'm Eric Raymer. This is Robert Grieve and we are very happy to see you and uh, and Rob t today we're going to talk a little bit about something that is uh, you know we we live here in the Denver metro Denver Colorado area uh, which not is too far from springs not too far from the springs and uh, not too far from uh, both tornado alley and hail alley this is kind of right in smack dab in the middle of, of the hail season here in Colorado. Yep. And, uh, you know, last year was a very mild year when it came to hail. Uh, but we've seen some hail storms come through uh, recently. And we've got something to talk about with our viewers. Yes? Sure thing. <laughs> you know, <Okay>. it's... <laughs> It's not a happy subject. Nobody wants to talk about hail, right? No, but there's a lot of things if your uh, vehicle gets hailed on uh, that you should know about. Uh, and first and foremost, I guess, there's, there, there's so many things that could be first. But I would say, uh, you know, fixing dents. These guys that, that, that fix hail dents, it's nothing short of a miracle. It's true. It's a very serious uh, set of skills that, that go in. It's artistry. It is. Right? Which kind of, and we're, we're going to talk about this, I know, kind of leads to the fact that, uh, you know, when you see a hailstorm come through and all these tents pop up all over the place and people are like, hey, we'll, we'll pay your deductible, we'll do this, we'll do that, all to get your business so that you're in, out, done quick, makes you wonder what kind of quality they're offering. Well, you know what? They... they there's a lot of different avenues. Some of these places, uh, first off, I never, never ever recommend going to a tent. All right, you want to go brick and mortar. You want to go to a place that's been in business for a while. Yeah. Uh, it's got a track record, good reviews, uh, all the rest of that normal stuff that you would look up on your own anyway. Well, and You're not going to find that on a tent, by the way. No, and, and you might not find the tent next weekend. No, the tent, they, they, they're tents for a reason. Yep. They roll up and, and they move out of town to the next storm. They're called storm chasers. And, yep. and if something's wrong with your car, you, there's not much you can do about it. Okay, so let's just start with if, you are, if your if vehicle's damaged with hail and you need a hail repair job there's different levels there's a lot of different ingredients that goes into hail repairs right some are what they call PDR which is paintless dent repair yep and then others uh, if if the hail is heavy enough can actually crack the paint absolutely causing long-term damage with rust issues and other things like that yeah so you need to know who to talk to we recommend a brick and mortar uh, Facility. Reputable, yep. reputable facility. Yep. All right. What's next? Uh, let's see. So, again, these people that do the paintless dent repair uh, are they're artists, and and when you do paintless dent repair, you know you're not needing to replace the panel or uh, repair the panel. With, with paint and all the rest of that stuff. Right. It's basically rolling the car in, letting them do their magic, and uh, it comes out looking right. nice. But many times there is uh, several different types of damage that the hail has created. So uh, your hood might be able to be PDR'd. It might not. Some hoods are aluminum. Some are steel. Some are a little more forgiving. Yeah. Uh, roof is a, is another one. May be able to be repaired. It may not be able to be paintless dent repaired. I should have said. Right. No. We've we've seen uh, roofs need to be replaced. From Sometimes time to time. they need to be replaced because they're so bad. Sometimes uh, we do what's called push to paint, where we push the dent out best as possible, but there's still cracked paint, so it all still has to be sanded down and painted. Okay. None of that stuff can happen at a uh, tent, all right? They're, they don't have any paint booths and right. so on and so forth. And even at places that specialize in paintless dent repair, hail repairs, yeah. many of them do not have a booth. So what happens is they land up doing whatever they can do with their paintless dent repair, and then they send it to another shop. 
to let them either replace a hood and paint it or, or you know, any of these things. Uh, right off the top of my mind, that sounds like an insurance nightmare. It, it's, it's a nightmare all the way around. Yeah. Because colors come back not matching and this and that, and they're trying to deliver the car back to you. It's just a totally unprofessional way to do it. You need to go to some place that can... If a panel needs to be replaced, then it's going to have to get painted, blended properly yep. with the refinishing. Uh, a roof replacement is a very invasive uh, uh, repair. Sure. Uh, and there is a lot that goes into that. But even if you have paintless dent repair on your roof, you're still dropping that headliner that's above your head. And there's could be all sorts of electronics and wires inside of there. Yeah. There's going to be likely airbags on both sides of them that may or may not have to be removed to get at something. Uh, some airbags are one-time use, so if you remove it, you're not supposed to put it back on. You're supposed to put a new one on. Okay. If you did, you know, if it doesn't need to be a one-time use thing and, and you can put it back on, almost 99% of the time you have to have new bolts because they cross thread coming out okay. and those are very important uh, to your safety that they're mounted and, and torqued correctly and uh, you know you, you mentioned cross threading bolts and things like that and torquing obviously we, we did a video on uh, in fact our very first airing of grievances video uh, was all about using a torque wrench properly and uh, I'll put a link to that right up here but are these things that most shops most Certainly most PDR locations, but most shops might even overlook. Oh, absolutely. That happens That happens all the time, every day. Um, and, it, and it gets even more than that. So here, here's the thing. If you're taking your headliner down yeah. or removing taillights to get inside of a quarter panel or, you know, uh, getting headlights and bumpers out of the way in order to get at the insides of the fenders. Yeah. You're disconnecting electronics. Right. In, but the very first thing you're supposed to do is disconnect the battery. So once you disconnect sure. the battery, and on these newer vehicles you reconnect the battery, that doesn't mean that everything's working. It's many times stuff has to be recalibrated and reinitialized. Sure, there's, there's so many computer connections uh, to all the different sensors right. that are on. And then, at a minimum, you need a post-repair scan to double check to make sure everything is operating as it's as it's designed and that leads us to remind you that sometimes when the uh, you look at the dashboard the lights don't always come on no when there are things malfunctioning uh, behind no. the scenes you we've, have to have that post repair scan yeah we've talked about we've that. talked about it many times yeah. and uh, uh, whether it's hail or collision or anything else people still half the industry still isn't doing you know the proper scans and even if you scan it you know you could have someone say yeah we're going to scan it well what are they going to scan it with are they going to scan it with a factory scanner that knows the vin of your car and understands everything that the car has or just some or, generic or some generic one yeah uh or sometimes you can uh, some shops will have a service where they plug it in and it gets routed to another company and they scan it off site and uh but scanning isn't the only thing that needs to be done. Uh, on many Toyotas and Lexuses, you have to reinitialize stuff, and that may or may not show up in the scan. That's just something you need to know by reading the procedures on that specific vehicle. Which brings us to another very important point, whether or not we're dealing with hail or any uh, auto repair when we're talking about collision repair. Uh, you need to go to a shop that actually reads the procedures, pulls the procedures for every single vehicle so that we know exactly what needs to be done, what can or cannot be done. And, and you know, we talk, we bang this drum a lot, Rob, but it's so important because uh, there are jobs that we have featured on this channel uh, where people ignore those things and then all of a sudden... Or don't even know that they need to do it. They don't even know, right? And and again, the root of ignore is ignorance. And and that's not an excuse for those shops. So And, and no longer is it an excuse for you because you're watching this and we're, we're warning you yeah. that there are things that have to be addressed. Yeah. And an educated consumer is a, a smart consumer. So if, if you get... Uh, if you go to a shop, let's just say you, you take my advice, you go to a brick-and-mortar shop. Yeah. 
take a look at that estimate. Make sure it's got scans on there. Make sure it's got reinitialized the uh, uh, the different systems inside the car. You bet. Um, I, you know, you've seen enough of my videos. You know, I don't want any aftermarket or used parts put on the car. Right. I just saw an estimate from uh, from another shop that was a, a paintless dent repair or a, a hail job. Yeah. The hood needed to be replaced, but they're putting a uh, a used hood on it out of the junkyard, and they don't even have the blend of fenders. So how could the color possibly be right? You always have to blend the adjacent panels to to get the color to match perfectly. You need somebody on your side. Uh, and and here's the other piece of it. Times have changed uh, in the you know claims side of things and they may want you to take pictures and load them up on an app and they're gonna send you an estimate or they may take the shops estimate that you take it to or they'll give you a list of preferred places to go don't go to any of those right uh, we've already talked about that and why uh, but if the insurance company is the one that's writing the initial estimate on it it is going to be way less than what the actual damage is. This is actually a thing, Rob, where insurance, especially when it comes to hail, yep. uh, insurers, and we've written articles on this as well on our website. Uh, I'll put the link to the website right down here. Uh, but you can, can, you see these insurance companies undervalue the repair because, especially with hail, because hail is cosmetic, yep. uh, they know that the behavior of many of their customers is to take that check, cash it, but not get the car repaired. repaired. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And if they can get away with dropping a low ball in, well, a penny saved is a penny billions of dollars. At your expense. Earned for the for the insurance company. Yeah. Uh, so that that's an important thing to know. If, if the insurance company is the one that's writing the initial estimate, yeah. take it to a shop of your choice, uh, a reputable shop, Yes, and have them take a look at it, because yeah. it could be comp just totally undervalued. Many times they miss moldings that have damage yeah. on them. Uh, oops, forgot, yeah. I, you know, I didn't put those moldings on. We're not always talking just a couple hundred dollars here. Uh, this can add up to thousands and thousands of dollars in difference yes. uh, with these things. So I love the idea of going to a reputable shop and having that estimate done by them. They're not going to charge you for that estimate. Probably right? not. Nope. And, uh, and, and yet now you have uh, he said, she said kind of a thing going on and you have information that will actually help you yeah. to go back to your insurer and say, <laughs> ain't gonna, that ain't going to cut it. So there, you got two different scenarios here. One yep. is you're going to cash the check, yep. okay, but still go to a shop and have them. Uh, if it's if it's not the right amount of money, they may have an admin fee or something like that. But sure. they'll write it up professionally and submit a supplement for you. And I mean, you're owed the value of the loss. That's right. So if they have not assessed the loss properly, then Somebody needs to intervene on your behalf. We do that all the time. Yep. Uh, for people that just prefer not to, you know, not to get it done, or they're going to trade the vehicle in, or yep. something along that line. I totally get that. You don't have to fix it, but you should be compensated fully. I mean, you're paying your full premium. Why That's wouldn't right. you want to get paid for the full loss? Well, and you know this to be true. We've talked about this as well. When you go to sell your vehicle, I guarantee you, the people who are buying it are going to take off. The oh, yeah, value yeah, yeah, of yeah, the yeah. loss, right? So that's something that you need to keep in mind. That's why you need to get that money on the front side from the insurer who owes it to you. Yep. yep. All right. Anything else we need to know about uh, hail and, uh, you know, recalibration, reinitialization, uh, correct post parts. scans, correct parts. Yep. Uh, don't go to a tent. That's probably the best advice we could give you right here. And don't, don't go to a tent. Many times you'll see drills on the ground. And why would there be a drill on the ground? Because they're going to drill holes in your car to gain access to, to do their paintless dent repair. And most all the uh, manufacturers of the vehicles, <coughs> excuse me, 
have position statements that say this is what can be done this is what can't be done many times they'll go in there and cut braces or drill holes and braces and and these are the you structural know, structural pieces of your car that yeah give it give it the strength so you really need to to take it and and, and if you get it back and something's a little weird then you know swing on by let's do a post repair inspection or or maybe you want me just to take a look at the the estimate and advise you on if uh, i feel as though everything's there or isn't there or there or potholes you know to look out for potholes uh, in the estimate in the estimate yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> please don't don't do hail and potholes in the same week that's, yeah, uh, yeah, that's yeah. A, t- a tough thing uh, so i, I want to tell you one thing about the moldings you think it's it's silly but some of the moldings that would need to be replaced are actually one-time use moldings so when you take that molding off you have to put a new one on and the reason that is is because they seal tight against the glass okay right? and they many of these pdr people need to get inside the door and they do it next to the window yep so they'll take the molding off go down there and do their 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 uh their little paintless dent repair right and slap the molding back on but if there's an airbag sensor in that door those airbag sensors don't work off of uh, momentum. They work off of pressure. Oh, okay. So the, you know, the molding keeps the pressure in there. So if the door got hit, wow. the airbag would know it needs to go off. I see. And if the molding was not replaced with a new one, it may not be sealing tight. Which means it may not deploy at the proper time, and we have Any already shown stuff, you yeah. what happens when it's even one one hundredth of a second off. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's so there's lots of little things to know about hail, and it's really important that you you pick the right place to get it done. I think the the final point here is is that hail hail repair is not as cosmetic as we think it is. No, especially if you have to replace a roof. Right. You know, we're talking structure safety. Uh, you know, is the, it going to be done correctly, and you're going to have water leaks, <laughs> rust, rust. Yeah. You know, you you got those uh, roof racks or roof rails on either side of it. Yep. How many people take those off, put them back on, and the the bolts are one time use? You know, so we've talked about that before. Yeah. So, yeah. hails are, are really kind of it, it. There's an art to it, and the people that actually push, uh, and we call it pushing, but paintless dent repair. Uh, again, they, they're miracle workers in what they do. Yeah. But as far as taking a car apart and putting it back together correctly, not so much. Yeah, that's not so much. That's really good good advice for all of us. Uh, so there you have it, guys. Uh, this is uh, Rob and Eric, and, and this is the airing of grievances. But really, one of the most important things that we want you to know is that this is for you. And for the people that you love, I mean, uh, you may find somebody in another state who has a hail claim, share this video with them. Let them know. And if you've got stories uh, of your situations, we'd love to hear what you've got going on too. So drop a comment below and let us know, uh, you know, is this helpful to you? Is it, uh, is it beneficial to you? And uh, what else could we do that would be maybe a little more beneficial for you? All right. So let's say thank you to everybody viewing, and I really appreciate you guys tuning in, especially Absolutely. our regulars and, yes. and our people that uh, join us on Saturday morning. Yep. And uh, Brother. Happy Saturday to you. And to you. Happy Saturday to you, and we'll see you next week.